And good evening. Uh, this is Frankly Speaking Live. I'm your host, Frank Holzhauser, and my co-host, David Kenyuke. How you doing this week, Dave? Well, we're hanging in there, Frank. Hanging in there. How about you? Uh, well, as you said earlier, we've we've it's been a trying and testing week for a it lot has of us. Been. It's been trying the patience a little bit this <laughs> week. So I apologize if I if I'm a little keyed up and scared. Seem a little today. frayed and frazzled. Yeah. I'll tell you the interesting that thing that happened. I mentioned this when I walked in, but I haven't told you about the experience yet. I late night flipping through some online channels, I came across an episode of Cosmos that somebody uh. was playing. <laughs> now, I had never watched this before, uh, and I pretty much knew what to expect going into it, but uh, I, I watched maybe about five to seven minutes. It was about all I could stomach. Uh, they were talking about, I, I can't remember exactly who they were talking about. They were talking about an, an astronomer uh, that preceded Galileo. His name was something uh, Bruno. Okay. It's, it's not it's not ringing a bell there but right. there were there were, the presentation it was presented in an animated format sure right so it's like it's like this this uh almost japanese anime that they're that they're presenting the story in and of course the story is uh, centering about how the roman catholic church was describing him as a heretic because he dared have the notion that uh, the earth was at the center of the universe and yeah. that there were other planets and everything like that which of course is true the catholic church did persecute they and I'm, did I'm, suppress. Yeah, I'm not trying to defend the catholic church i'm no fan of that but uh the whole point of it was an absolute attack on religion of course in the scene where he's uh, on trial he uh, used the uh, the standard, I don't believe my uh, God is that small line that they like to throw at you. The thing that really got me, though, was uh, towards the end of this part, he's, uh, he's going to be burned at the stake. They've got him all tied up in the square and everything, and then uh, the priest comes up to get him uh, to uh, renounce one last time. And the priest is carrying this, uh, this uh, staff with a, a crucified Jesus on it, and uh, I, I was just really struck by this symbolism. He uh, holds the staff uh, up to this guy as if to say, this is your last chance to accept Jesus. Right. And the guy turns his head away. Like Dracula. He turns his head away. So I read that as saying, this guy, Bruno, is, is rejecting the old notions of Christ for his own version of Christ. And then, of course, he's burned at the stake. And the next scene is... His consciousness is reawoken in outer space, in the cosmos. So uh, it, it was almost like the message was reject your notions of Christ and you'll get, uh, you'll get to a higher understanding. Right. That's what it was saying. Well, it was kind of neat, uh, in a way, that uh, the Lord saw fit that the uh, Renaissance and the Reformation come come about about the same time. They were right. almost like twin sisters. Right. And how did those come those come about about the same time that the Bible was being translated into the common language? Uh, well, and it, it, it had shown that uh, we were coming out of the Dark Ages, and the Catholic Church had suppressed science and faith uh -huh. for centuries. It was it was a typical Seth MacFarlane. He's the guy who produces yeah. Family Guy and American Dad. Typical Seth MacFarlane attack on religion that you see in all of his shows. Exactly. Uh, the other thing that struck me was when they came back from commercial break, Degrassi was you know picking back from the picking back up where they uh, left off on the story, and he's like, uh, I, I can't remember verbatim what he said, but uh, he says it, it was tough living in a time like that that uh, that uh, didn't have the separation of church and state, and didn't hold uh, the values that we hold sacred, like the First Amendment. Wait a second. This coming from Neil Tyson de Graz, Yeah. The same guy. Wasn't this the same guy who said that, well, if you don't believe in the Big Bang Theory, then uh, I don't think you should have the right to well, vote? Well, on Bill Moyers, he actually questioned those who don't believe. Uh, he, he, well, let's see. How did he, exactly did he phrase it? He kind of phrased it that those that believe in a young earth really didn't deserve there the right to vote. There it was. Okay. I, I remember. I didn't remember verbatim what he said, but I right. remember something along those lines. Isn't voting the ultimate expression of your First Amendment freedom of speech? Well, sure. Yeah. So I thought that was just the ultimate in hypocrisy. But. Well, uh, 
as we're getting started on the show, let me uh, give out the numbers to call if you'd like to question or comment us. Uh, those numbers would be uh, toll-free, 855-244-0077, and uh, that's uh, toll-free. And if you would like to contact us locally, uh, it'd be 244-0077. Um, again, uh, Ryan is producing our show. I, I, I need to start mentioning that, uh, more often. And, uh, I'd like to mention that, uh, anybody who's curious about the background, uh, uh, Bob, one of our, one of the guys on our uh, other shows talks about, well, it looks like tie dye. Well, it's, it's the old Cosmos set that, uh, Neil Tyson DeGrasse was not using. Yes, yes. So but it's, it's we're actually. We're able to get that on the cheap. It's actually the constellation of Ryan's Great Nebula, uh, one of the most uh, beautiful scenic sites in the in the uh, cosmos. Um, <laughs> again, I'd like to kind of start the show out. Uh, kind of like to start the show out something holding up Christ. Um, and I dug a couple things out of my archives on Facebook, and I typed this one. Uh, this has been way over a year ago. Uh, you ever heard the term closing the deal? This is how I perceive decision time with our Lord. I think of three examples. First, the rich young ruler. He had some desire for truth, but he could not close the deal. When the master requested that he sell all that he owned and give to the poor, he had to walk away because the Lord's plan was not his plan. Judas uh, was a follower of the Lord, but for his own reasons, his turning point, when Christ told him if he didn't partake of his body and blood, there was no life in him. This crushed Judas's plan uh, that Christ would not be crucified and set up a, a, an earthly kingdom. And it, Judas couldn't close the deal. He knew that his will of an earthly kingdom was impossible and all his efforts to be first in line was over. His decision was cast. Then there was Pilate. As Jesus' fate laid in his hands, he sensed that he was witness to something beyond his understanding. Everything he knew was finite. Now he was faced with the infinite infinite. His wife sent him a letter after a tormenting dream. She warned him, do not harm this man. But Pilate was more concerned with earthly power and rule, and Christ would be a threat to that. He tried to wash his hands. But how does anyone ignore omnipotence? Three men had a choice. Three men choose, chose their will over God's. Every man and woman who reads this will be faced with this same dilemma, your will or his. What are you going to choose? Well, it certainly feels like the deal is about to be closed on a lot of things in this uh, in this old world. Yes, uh, last day's events are rapidly upon mm -hmm. us, and um, I'll take that right into this next uh, post that I dug out of uh, my archives. Make no mistake. This battle going on over setting the precedent for drone strikes on U.S. citizens on U.S. soil is being laid down for the end times. Mm -hmm. When Christians will be forced to flee to the mountains and the persecution and death decree of the saints, when Christians will flee to, into the mountains and cannot easily be found, they will be declared as eco-terrorists. And drone strikes will likely be the method to seek out and destroy them. Satan intends to sift you as wheat, and if you're not prepared, you better take heed and get prepared. Thank you so much, man. I, I could not have said that better myself. Really, because that, that's... Every, every story that I try to bring to the table, everything that I, I bring up here is, is uh, basically trying to show how these things are being created, and that's exactly right. Those drone strikes, all that precedent and everything... That is being set up for the persecution of... Well, it's, it's, it's going to culminate in, in, exactly. in that. Exactly. All these world events are going to culminate into one big bubbling cauldron. Mm -hmm. And you asked a couple of weeks ago, what's going to be this moment or this time that kind of... Right, the tipping point. ...causes the, the cauldron to bubble over the, the, the pot. Right. And um, But that's what's going to happen at the end of it. And that's why, that's why Christians, you, you, you got to get off the bench, man. You got to get off the bench because this stuff is being set up. Well, you just know, staying out of the game is not going to protect you. Well, the Church of Lady Ocean, we know, is uh, one of God's um, curses, so to speak, because of the characteristics of that church. Lukewarm, mm -hmm. and God hates lukewarm. 
That's right. He would rather have you ice cold to him. Yep, either hot or ice cold, lest I spew you out of my mouth. Than be lukewarm. Mm -hmm. He wants you fervently for him or fervently against him. Just don't be straddling the fence with one foot in each world. And, right. And there's coming a time that's soon coming when the world is going to be for, forced to get on one side of the fence or the other. So uh, picking up our uh, continuum of the topic that we've been um, talking about the last several weeks, um, free speech and uh, speech issues and freedom of thought and what have you, and you've got some stories that you have come loaded for bear this week. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, yeah, we've got uh, just breaking today that Home and Garden Television uh, pulling their, their show from uh, two guys who... I guess were uh, against homosexuality. Well, they were. Uh, what were they? Realtors or someone that helped you? It was some. Yeah, it was like uh, they uh, they helped flip homes. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the show apparently hadn't gotten off the ground, but it was approved, and apparently uh, HGTV did an extensive background check. But then uh, Glad and the other uh, the the gay lobbies, you know, they got a hold of this. Sure. And, just, and and put as much pressure as they could on HGTV. So now HGTV is dropping them. It just goes to show that you have to uh, fall in line with a certain uh, minority uh, mindset or else you're ostracized, you're blackballed. You're bullied. Yeah, you're bullied. And that was one of the headlines on, uh, the, on Drudge. The, is that, the Chick-fil-A guy got bullied and fell into right, line. Right, right. Uh, Sterling got bullied. Well, and, yeah. And as much of a scumbag as he is, he, he still got bullied. But it is all about setting that precedence that there is there are certain things that are just not acceptable for you to, uh, to even think. And these guys aren't about discrimination. These guys weren't, uh, you know, bullying anybody or anything like that. Actually, interesting story on bullying. Let me get this real quickly here. Ah, over in uh, Carson, California, officials in the city of Carson on Tuesday introduced an ordinance that would impose criminal penalties for anyone convicted of bullying school children and young adults. The ordinance would make it a misdemeanor to carry or would make it a misdemeanor to cause any Carson residents from kindergarten through age 25 to feel terrorized, frightened, intimidated, threatened, harassed, or molested without necessarily requiring a threat of physical harm. Think about that. They're going to charge kindergartners with a misdemeanor if they uh, bully somebody. And, of course, what what's bullying? What's that going to be? Well, that ties into the story several months ago where, a, was it, a six-year-old boy kissed a girl classmate? Do mm -hmm. you remember that story? And he uh, was charged with uh, sexual harassment? Yeah, and I've potentially seen was put on a... Uh, yeah, he's put on a sex offender list because yeah. uh, because he's a six year old boy and he kisses a girl and then whoa, we can't have that. I mean this this politically correct muck uh, is uh, running a muck. Yeah, I um, had an opportunity this week to uh, again talk to Simon Conway on his show. Oh yeah. And he was uh, basically trying to exterminate the word that somebody made up here recently, gay stopo out of the lexicon, somebody apparently on their private blog mm -hmm. wrote the word in a blog condemning uh, homosexual behavior and that the bullying that's going on, uh, trying to bully you into line and was likening it to uh, the Gestapo style tactics. Mm. And his job got a hold of that private blog and the guy was fired supposedly for the use of this uh, term Gestapo. Yeah, but the, nothing happens to Bill Maher, who uh, who talks about the gay mafia. Oh, well, sure, and, sure. Uh, uh, Bill Maher, he's in a category of all of his own. <laughs> and so. I agree with him on this point. I mean, there is like this mafia mentality where you can't you can't have any disagreement with them whatsoever or else it's a hate. It's well, a hate crime. Let's just have free speech all the way around. I mean, if, if Bill Maher can say what he can say... Well, Let's give you, him that you, freedom, and we say what we can you say. You can't set up the worship of Lucifer unless uh, unless you deny free speech to those who would oppose well, him. Well, we're on our first break, and this has been uh, Frankly Speaking Live with your host, Frank Holzhauser, and co-host, David Kanuke. We will return shortly. 
all across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships. Transform your world. Yes, now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone, tablet, or iPad. Yes, your favorite shows on Webcast One Live are available live or on podcast wherever you go. Let me introduce to you some of our great shows. Shalom. Every week on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman, we'll talk about issues in the Middle East, issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Hey, this is Doc with Doc and Lefty. I want to tell you about our brand new time slot. It's from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. It's on the same night, Tuesdays. We now follow Ed Fallon and the Fallon Forum on webcast1live.com. I want to tell you a little bit about our show. Our show is focused on local, state, and national, and sometimes international politics. We like to keep people updated and informed. We also have very interesting guests. So please join us every Tuesday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. on webcast1live.com. So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Somebody help! Help! Save us! Hi, I'm Tom Coach from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray! We're And we're back with Frankly Speaking Live. I'm your host, Frank Holzhauser, and co-host, David Kenyuk. And uh, our topic the last couple of weeks, we've been kind of uh, touching on a lot of stories that involve our um, assault uh, on our free speech. That's right. Free speech, whether it's uh, free speech of the thought, not just talking, but free speech of your thought, uh, free speech of uh, who you ter- who you want to associate with. Uh, there was a story here. Let's see here. Also, uh, your freedom of speech or your freedom of uh, of religion being uh, being being banned. Here's one story: uh, a man facing jail jail time for hosting a home Bible study. Uh, this guy was out of Phoenix, Arizona. He's been sentenced to uh, 60 days in jail. After he refused to stop hosting uh, Bible studies in the privacy of his home because it was in violation of the city's building code laws. Uh, that, that was in Phoenix. And then there was another uh, story out of Fairfax County here that they were going to uh, try to downsize home assemblies. So not only are they trying to regulate through 501c3 uh, tax laws what is said in the church, but... If you decide to say, "Hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go to that. I'm gonna host my own Bible study." They're now, trying now, to... where's our right to assemble at in this? <laughs> well, apparently it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, let's see. A plan to frequent and large gathering at neighborhood homes is a lawsuit waiting to happen. A Fairfax County supervisor predicts officials will get an idea Wednesday when public comment hearings begin in Virginia's most populous county. 
I believe the county is risking a lawsuit and or a constitution challenge by interfering with people's rights to assemble, Supervisor Pat Harity said in a statement. The proposed zoning ordinance limits group assemblies at residences to 49 people a day. Such gatherings shall not occur more frequently than three times in any 40-day period. What does it matter to them? What does it matter to them who is gathering in a home like that? It, it, As weight regulation, <laughs> uh, elevator, you know, yeah. uh, we can only have so much weight in one spot on the earth. Well, the, the other thing, and this just came out today, uh, if you really want to get into how uh, how uh, much we've sunken into uh, an Orwellian 1984 mindset, old uh, John McCain uh, has uh, come out and said that Americans should accept that their private conversations are being monitored. Sen- Senator John McCain told a radio show recently that Americans should accept the notion that their private conversations are being recorded by the government, even in the privacy of their own homes. McCain was asked by host Dan Patrick what his thoughts were on the Donald Sterling controversy, in particular, the concept of private conversations being recorded and then released publicly. Sterling's controversial remarks became public after his girlfriend, V. Stiviano, taped hundreds of hours of private discussions between the two. Uh, What about taping somebody in his own home using that, asked Patrick. It's the world we're living in. You don't like it, but everything I say, I expect to be recorded, McCain responded. It's just the way we live, Dan. It's something you've got to accept. I don't particularly like it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But it is what it is, added the senator, making reference to a recent poll, which revealed that 53% of Americans believe their telephone conversations were being listened to. Uh, so yeah, he's trying to justify the NSA listening on every aspect, listening in, not in, not only just with your uh, telephone calls when you make telephone calls, but also watching your emails. Uh, Google can actually tap in, uh, to your cell phone recording or to your cell phone microphone. Sure. Doesn't matter if you're talking on your cell phone or not. They can tap into your cell phone microphone at any stinking time they want to. So use it for a listening device. Absolutely. Well, even when it's not on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Google has I'm, patents on that going back to uh, to 2002. So potentially they have a uh, a hidden microphone in your pocket. Yeah, your your Android device and hey, I got an Android device. I will admit, I I submit to that. Uh, I submit to that imperial government probe droid that's uh, you know riding around in my pants there, listening to everything that I do. Yeah, potentially. But uh, no, it's it's an absolute fact. I've had specific uh, instances where I have talked about something like uh, something offhand, like, gosh, I could use a massage. And then like the next day I get something from like uh, an email from Deal Chicken. Oh, okay. oh 50% off massages. Oh, okay. Now, I didn't go searching on the internet for this. All right. Nobody else searched on the internet for this. It's just something that I said. Yeah. And and then lo and behold, and I've had this happen several times with several different topics that sure. I have not searched for. Uh, I get something along those lines well, that says obviously when you do search for things on the internet, right, you will get cookie. those ads. Right. They've got your... cookies that, you know, take a look at your search history and send those to sure. uh, ad servers. And these are sold from one company right. to another. That's to be expected. But this is I hundred percent certain this is going this is being sent because of something that I'm being that is being picked up off of a microphone well, from a I cell phone device. Well, I do know the technology is there, and there's the threat that it's uh, potentially a threat that, to be used in the future, but it may be on us right now. No, it is on us right now. That's what the whole uh, you know billion-dollar NSA data center that was built in Utah just recently is all about, is collecting every single piece of data that they can get on you. Well, a couple of things that I... Uh, noticed in the media this week on uh, kind of speech style issues was the flap over Condoleezza Rice speaking at uh, Rutgers. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether you like uh, her stance on uh, the the Iraqi war or not, uh, she's not been convicted of any war crimes, so therefore she ought to be free to speak uh, there as much as uh, anyone. But I caught something in the news as a, as a, a note to that, that Harvard is to host a uh, reenactment of a satanic mass. Mm, yeah, I saw that. On uh, May the 12th. So um, it's interesting, some of the things we will let on our campuses, 
and some of the things that we will keep off. That's right. Uh, here's a story. Florida teacher banned Bible from free reading time in classroom. Now, keep in mind, this wasn't a uh, university. This was a public school. But uh, this fifth grade, fifth grade student, Giovanni Rubio, uh, he had been given a Bible at church as a Christmas gift. Uh, the teacher had free reading time, so you know you could read any book that you want for a certain amount of time. He had his Bible. He wanted to read that. Teacher says, no, you can't do it. You can't do it. Uh, he said, I noticed that uh, Giovanni has a book, a religious book in the classroom. He's not permitted to read those books in my classroom. Uh, Rubio then contacted the school's prin- principal, Ornithia Diaz, who brought in the school's legal department. None of them are willing to acknowledge that Giovanni has a constitutional right to read the Bible. This kid wasn't preaching. The school wasn't trying to uh, promote a religious uh, viewpoint whatsoever. He just wanted to read his Bible, but that's not allowed. Now, you was mentioning last night uh, that you uh, indulged in a little uh, uh, Neil uh, deGrasse Tyson. Right, yeah, we opened the show with that. Well, I was probably on the other end of the spectrum. I indulged a little Chris Matthews last night, just for giggles. Dig. Gosh, man, why? Hadn't had enough punishment in my life. Did you get a thrill up your leg? (laughs) No, it did not uh, blossom into a full-blown Obamagasm. Oh, God. Sorry. Uh, But uh, uh, one of the guests uh, that—well, I did notice two things on Chris Matthews. He cannot uh, pronounce—it's— Benghazi. <laughs> and it's the Holocaust, in case you want to know. It was the Holocaust? The Holocaust, Holocaust that killed all the Jews during World War II. Mm. But uh, they had a couple of uh, Jewish uh, people on there last night. Uh, a, a, I believe it was a high school teacher was uh, having a assignment on people to uh, come up with their own personal opinion on whether the Holocaust actually existed or not. And you know there's been that battle for a, oh, a, yeah. a, a number of years that uh, there are supposed Holocaust deniers. Mm-hmm. And this obviously infuriates the uh, Jewish community. Right, to the degree that, uh, much like the, the, uh, the gay community, it's like, if you question anything about the Holocaust, well, you're ostracized, you're blackballed. Now, I'm not defending that whatsoever. I'm not... Well, again, our, our institutions of learning are supposed to be for the expression of speech. They're supposed to be for ideas, even though sometimes Uh the ideas may not be something that we all like, but it's the expression of ideas one to another. You discuss these ideas, you accept the ideas, or you reject the ideas. Mm -hmm. And um, I just don't like the fact with the, the, the gay lobby, the Jewish lobby, that we're going to shut down debate. We're not even going to entertain the thought or entertain the debate that somebody wants to think this, Mm -hmm. again, thought police, Mm -hmm. or speak this, speech police. Mm -hmm. And and I just find it, um, you know, I I just find it revolting that no one seems uh, to—Chris Matthews, this just goes over his head like duck off a water's, uh, you know, water off a duck's back, that he doesn't give it a second thought. Right. No, they they treat it as some joke. They don't they don't care that people died. They don't care where those weapons are going and what those weapons are being used for and the deaths of all those uh, people that are that are being caused because of the uh, weapons trafficking that happened out of Libya because of uh, because of Benghazi. And I saw this just before I came in. This was pretty close to my hypocrite of the week. Uh, there was a Democratic candidate who tweeted a uh, Benghazi masturbation joke. (laughs) A Democratic congressional candidate insulted countless Americans this week after tweeting an offensive joke regarding the 2012 Benghazi attack. Trish Causey, a candidate for Mississippi's 4th District, disgustingly tied National Masturbation Month into the Republican Party's concern over information surrounding the deaths of four Americans in Libya. The tweet read, as part of National Masturbation Month, Republicans like screaming the name of their fluffer, Ben Ghazi, when they orgasm. Hashtag true story, Trish for Congress. This was done on May 4th. Yeah, they're, they're, they're ramping up the... Um, I've got a couple of things that I will mention at uh, the next segment uh, of, about this Ben Ghazi story. 
and how they're trying with purpose to um, divert mm-hmm. or sleight of hand, uh, change the topic. But um, yeah, I've, I, I, I've saw all these things in the news this week. Well, it's all about what we talked about and hit on last week. The revelation is, is not that it was, uh, you know, it wasn't the video, then they lied about the video. That's part of the revelation. The revelation is what that Benghazi station was being used for. That was not a consulate. It was a CIA station that was being used for weapons trafficking, funneling uh, weapons over to, uh, to Syria. Well, it had been attacked twice. Mm-hmm. Britain had pulled out. Everybody was out of the country except basically us. Yeah. And we're there for what reason? We're there to turn it into a weapons clearinghouse. Because well, one of my questions that I want to know is: is it? Well, it's it, it's the host country's ability. Their government is supposed to protect our ambassadors. If there is no functioning government, which there wasn't in in Benghazi at the time, what were we doing there? Number one, what were we doing there if we were there with not sufficient protection for our ambassadors and the people who were at, in, in at risk? Well, we, we wanted him taken out. Absolutely. We wanted uh, Chris Stevens taken out because he was getting cold feet about what was really going on. And the reason that we were in Libya was because Gaddafi was doing too good of a job of building up the economy in, in Libya, and it was not under control of a centralized bank. Well, according to what I heard from some reputable sources on the news yesterday, it's talking about that uh, actually uh, Gaddafi was trying to, he was not a fan of, of al-Qaeda and no, was trying was to push trying al-Qaeda to out of the country. And al-Qaeda, of course, is a CIA-run organization. Well, we're at the top of the hour, and we're coming on our second break. Uh, This has been Frankly Speaking Live. I'm your host, Frank Holzhauser, and co-host is David Kenyuk. Uh, We will return shortly. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. (laughs) Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I am Administrative Manager. I am the Senior Technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture um, that we're going to do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. (laughs) You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me, but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. (laughs) Keep going, though. I like this. (laughs) Just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed right or it's free or 100% money back. Enough said.
And we're back with Frankly Speaking Live. I'm your host, Frank Holshauser, and co-host David Kanuke. Uh We started out the show, and I uh, referenced uh, the end of times, Christians potentially fleeing to the mountains, when and the death decree comes out for the saints. And uh, we will be declared as eco-terrorists, and drone strikes will likely be the method to seek out and destroy uh, God's uh, saints. And um, you had a follow-up uh, article that you wanted to mention of something that caught your eye in the news this oh, week yeah. about drone strikes. Yeah, and this is a testament to how slow I'm thinking tonight, because <laughs> <laughs> I should have caught this right away. But Better yeah, late than never. Uh, David David Barron, uh, he's an Obama administration nominee for a federal appeal a federal appeals court, and he's uh, so he's nominated for this. He's also the author of government memos that would that made legal justifications for killing US citizens with drone strikes. And uh, so Rand Paul is trying to get these memos released. The White House tried to cut a deal with him saying, "Well, we'll just let you read the memos." But uh, Rand was like, "No, we're we're going to get these released to the public or else we're going to block the uh, nomination." Uh, our senator, Senator uh, Chuck Grassley is is joining with uh, Rand Paul in the fight to get these memos memos released. This guy, he should be facing trial for treason, really for even arguing that the government can kill somebody without trial and violate their constitutional rights instead of being nominated for a court position. Yeah. I mean, that's where we are in this country right now. Uh, well, I wanted to try to tie a couple of stories together in the interest of time. Mm -hmm. uh, this week in the news, uh, Monica Lewinsky has made it back in the news, obviously. Hooray! Uh, we uh, Like we didn't get enough Monica the first time. I didn't get enough Monica the first time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the 50th time. <laughs> and I did not have relations with that woman. Wait, no, I and thought I, I did. I did. I people. did. <laughs> I did have a relations with the Tweety Bird. <laughs> with the Pooty Cat. But... Uh, uh, Alexis McGill Johnson was asked in a direct question by Hannity the other night about Clinton's uh, quote on war on women. And of course, her response immediately pivoted to uh, she ignored the question by, you know, pivoting to the kidnapped Nigerian girls. Mm. And uh, I went on to talk about what the real sexual um, you know the real sexual harassment case was about was Paula De Paula Jones trying to get a day in court but that may just be a one-off thing until you see the same thing happen a second time this week apparently Bob Beckel who I gave kudos to last week as a sane speaking liberal <laughs> was caught on air this week saying that basically he acknowledged as a committed liberal that Obama lied over Benghazi the story was spun seven weeks from an election to uh, insulate the president from a bad story going into e uh, the election season and acknowledge that lie openly, uh, but quickly turned the story to the Nigerian kidnapped mm -hmm. girls. So, uh, so McGill and, and Bechtel, are they, uh, I'll take it. They're going to support Hillary. For uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm say that was probably be a safe bet. Okay. Well, the Daily Beast reported this week that uh, the State Department, under the glorious direction of Hillary, <laughs> Hillary Clinton, and just for just for uh, disclosure, uh -huh. in one of the books I've read on the Clintons, this is Bill's pet name for her. Okay, I didn't know where that this was coming the, from. This is the reason why I use this is because he runs around and calls her Hillary. I thought it was like a, a play on. Uh, on celebrity culture, where J Jennifer Lopez is J Lo or right, something like right. that. But, no, this uh, is that uh, works. I, I don't remember. I've I've probably read a dozen or so books on the impeachment and the Clintons and and different angles from it. And I did pick that up in one of my readings. Anyway, so 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 you would say that these people are are pretty firm Hillary Clinton fans, and we should be focusing on getting the uh, the two hundred and some odd uh, schoolgirls that were vilely kidnapped by these uh, Nigerian uh, terrorist militants. The Daily Beast reported that the State Department, under Hillary Clinton, fought hard against placing the Al-Qaeda-linked militant group Boko Haram on its official list of foreign terrorist organizations for two years. Okay, now, 
I had a question. Was it now? Was this the seventies group that sung the lighter shade of pale? Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I think that's Procol Harum. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's uh, the nineteen seventies music there. Uh, but uh, anyway, U.S. officials are saying that the de- that the decision may have hurt the American government's ability to confront the Nigerian group that shocked the world by abducting hundreds of innocent girls. Uh, on Wednesday, Clinton said that the abduction of the girls by Boko Haram was abominable. It's criminal, it's an act of terrorism, and it really merits the fullest response possible, first and foremost, from the government of Nigeria. Uh, so, yeah, these people who are lapping up at the feet of Hillary and, uh, and, and saying that we should divert all attention away from Benghazi and everything that happened and, and, and try and get these uh, and try and focus on these, these girls that were kidnapped, Hillary is responsible for this through her own State Department. Well, my my first thought on that is sometimes we are in bed with strange bedmates, as we were with the uh, Taliban in uh, Afghanistan. We funded the Taliban to basically fight the Russians in a proxy war. Right, and that's how Al Qaeda was formed. It was it was a database of of the Mujahideen fighters who would fight, you know, who we could use and who we could pay off to fight the Russians. So there could be some plausible explanations. Uh, giving Hillary the benefit of the doubt, which I usually don't do, and I probably won't do here. <laughs> well, no, but, no, that's 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 plausible. I mean, it's an Al-Qaeda-backed group. We know that we are funding those groups. I mean, this is, this is absolutely out in the open. And we could have, uh, the people in the State Department that are doing a good job, they could have declared this group a terrorist organization— they didn't, probably because we're using them for destabilization in Nigeria. Well, some people— And where do you think these people got the weapons that they used to uh, to pull off this well, kidnapping? Well, their, their, their immediate spin of it is that uh, we didn't want to give these guys credit by mentioning their name. Oh, please. So we're going to actually, by, by, by putting them up high on this list, we're actually making them into something that they're really not. Yeah. Uh, that that's ridiculous. It's it's the old saying that you never name your opponent. You always call your an opponent in a campaign your opponent. You never give him the privilege of having his name mentioned because when you mention his name, you're val- uh, validating him. Well, I I think there's definitely a difference between a campaign opponent and a uh, a group that. Uh is supposed to be a, uh, a a pretty nasty organization. Well, like that's this. the spin that's been coming out the last uh, a day well, or two. Well, that's that's really funny though that you mention it because uh, all you hear from from the left, from the fascist left, is uh, is uh, Tea Party this, Tea Party that. You know, they can't help but say Tea Party in every in every demonization campaign that they throw out there. Well, two things I want to mention on this uh, in the interest of time. Uh, Greg Gutfeld had an interesting take on this on the five, uh, I believe it was yesterday. He said, buy the girls. You know, the United States, let's purchase them. Let's buy them out of captivity. And then when they hand them <laughs> over, bomb the crap out of them. Well, I hate to say this, but uh, who's going to actually be making money off of it? Yeah. I mean... And then the second, uh, the second thing that I caught on Chris Matthews last night was uh, uh, Chris was just beside himself because the um, of the Benghazi committee that's being formed in Congress, and he's just beside himself because there's some Republican campaign fundraising going on mm-hmm. on behest of these four dead Americans. And he had the previous uh, Michael Steele, the previous uh, RNC uh, leader, Mm -hmm. on last night to talk about it and um, condemn it. But golly gee whiz, uh, Democrats have never raised money on a tragedy like this, have they? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Remember the whole health care debacle uh, back in, what was it? Was that the 96 election when they kept playing? the uh, video of Newt Gingrich over and over again where he was talking about Medicaid or something and his strategy, well, let it wither on the vine. You remember those? They would they would parade the old people out there and talk about how oh, Newt Gingrich is going to take well, away our health care. You remember the— you remember, Let it wither on the vine! You remember the uh, famous James Byrd ad that uh, the black man was drugged to death in Texas by a couple of three individuals— 
and they was trying to force Bush into, uh, you know, into accepting some further hate crime uh, punishment. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the, the, you know, obviously the, the, the Congressional Black Caucus and a lot of individuals raised a lot of money on the death of James Byrd. Yeah. So, I mean, that is, that is just the height of hypocrisy that, uh, you know, condemn somebody for raising money on something, which this would probably not be a good thing to raise money on. Well, I think we could all, probably all agree on that. But the Democrats' hands are certainly not clean. Yeah. How much money did they raise on 9-11? How much money did they raise on all kinds of atrocities that has happened around the world? Have they not heard the phrase, remember the Alamo? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> huh. But, um, oh, and uh, the, sta- the State Department also, getting back to uh, Libya, the State Department also released on April 30th, it's uh, 2013 country reports on terrorism, saying that the U.S. created a terrorist safe haven in Libya. Oops. Well, but I guess we're not cool. Uh, <laughs> I have it hashtagged. Uh, apparently, a Michelle Obama with her pouty lips and her pouty demeanor hashtag something, bring back our girls. Yeah. And Hillary has hashtagged. And uh, Ellen uh, DeGeneres uh, has hashtagged. And um, I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the, po- the, the Boko Haram... We'll take that into consideration in letting these girls go. You think they're on uh, Twitter? Uh, I'm guessing they. If they are <laughs> not, uh, the word is out that uh, uh, Michelle and Hillary and Ellen has are sending them a message. Oh, good. Well, that there you go. So I'll sleep better tonight knowing that. Well, they better not be bossy to those girls. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is again the height of hypocrisy that uh, Hillary talks about how terrible this group is, and when she had a chance to put the group on a terrorist list, uh, we don't want to offend their feelings, of course. But uh, you know, we we didn't earmark these people as terrorists. Now we're paying the price for it, mm-hmm. and uh, now we are supposed to apparently, I guess, put boots on the ground to uh, rescue these girls. Right, which is probably uh, the whole point of not declaring them terrorists in the first place and letting them continue to run amok, but, so we could have a point. But, to put- but yet we have serial child abductors and children go missing and killed on our streets on a nightly basis and we can't police our own country but we're supposed to go police somebody else's yeah well well we're coming upon our uh, last break and uh, usually our last segment is our hypocrites of the week and uh, we have a couple of fine candidates for that uh, position this week and um, uh, I have a couple and I'm kind of debating which ones I, I, I may give both. Do them both. Do them both. But uh, we shall be back soon with our choices for Hypocrite of the Week and Sane Speaking Liberal, if any. <laughs> this has been Frankly Speaking with your host, Frank Holzhauser and David Knuke. Hey, psst. let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations, change your life, change your relationships transform your world. 
from the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. And we're back with Frankly Speaking Live. I'm your host, Frank Holzhauser, and my co-host, David Kenyuk. Uh, while David is searching for his hypocrite of the week, he did assure me he has a kudos, but I will <laughs> proceed with uh, uh, these two that I uh, find candidates I found this week. Uh, my uh, hypocrite of the, hypocrites of the week would be the Congressional Black Caucus. These bozos always spout off when a Republican president goes to war that we can't be the world's police. But none other than good old Sheila Jackson Lee is calling for the U.S. to put boots on the ground to rescue Nigerian girls kidnapped by terrorists. But yet these same foolish people can't. But yet these same fools can't police the serial child abductors and gang-related murders in our country's inner cities. How about Jackson Lee calling for the National Guard, as Bob Beckel and I has called for, to go into Chicago? and stop the gang violence. I heard a preacher say on the radio this week that it's the parents' duty to evangelize their children, not the churches. But how do you evangelize a dead kid? Stop the damn killing on Chicago's south side, then go rescue some kids in another country. Then my second uh, choice would be uh, Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin. Not Scott Walker, but the people who are after him. I, I write, Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin, when will the crap ever stop? The guy won an election in his state telling folks what he was exactly going to do. A deal with the public u unions, runaway costs, but that wasn't enough. The unions then protested, picketed the state capitol with sit-in protests, mic checks, bucket beating, and all manner of mayhem. Then they got the chance to do a signature recall election, Boy, here was their chance to get him. Guess what? The governor won the election and increased, not only did he win the election, but increased the percentage of the original victory. You'd think that would shut the Ed Schultzes and similar fools up. But no, now a court has shut down a secret probe into the out-of-state money and donors. Again, does the hypocrites have any shame? I guess out-of-state money is only bad when it's against you. And the money and politicians, Obama, and um, Clinton's poured into the state to oppose Walker. Now we got a judge stopping the probe and other judges keeping it going. Here's an idea. Let the voters take care of the issue. Oh, that's right. They did twice. The problem is Walker has turned the state into a surplus and not a deficit. And the voters like the governor, but some Schultzes and Sharptons just can't let it go. It's the will of the people, fools. Well, now, and I'm not sure if this was the Republic or the, uh, the the Black Caucus that uh, that had called for this, but I know that there have been calls to put the National Guard uh, in places like Detroit and Chicago to police the violence. Um, well, the, if they the, have, the problem, I have not heard that. This has been, and it hasn't been recently. It's been, you know, maybe a year, maybe two, three years ago. the The solution to these problems is to let people defend themselves with their Second Amendment rights. And that's really the key. We can oh. never we can never allow people to open carry. We can never allow people to get the uh, secret to get out that if people are able to defend themselves, crime goes down, which the Justice Department's own numbers show that crime is, has gone down like 53%. So that's what that amendment was for. <laughs> that's what that—it wasn't hunting deer after oh, all. Oh, man, I've been confused all this time. Yeah. Protect so, us from our government. Right. How about how about uh, how about stop funding these groups? Stop funding these these Al Qaeda groups uh, to destabilize countries like Nigeria or to uh, to try and topple Assad. Just stop funding them. Stop sending our money to go do that. So, did you find your hypocrite of the week, or I, do you just have a sane sane speaking? I'm just uh, going to go with the kudos of the week. I, I I can't really as much as I want to hit Harry Reid again. <laughs> 
for uh, <laughs> he he got up on the Senate floor and said that uh, the main cause of climate change is are the Koch brothers. Yes. So along with the fact that uh, immediately <clears throat> immediately he pivoted and tried to turn the Donald Sterling controversy into. Again, trying to uh, take away the Washington Redskins logo <laughs> for about the umpteenth time. Yeah, and this is what this is what is being focused on. This guy should be on trial for treason for what happened in the uh, in the Bundy Ranch standoff for his crooked uh, land deal there. But anyway, my kudos of the week is uh, Vermont uh, passed legislation requiring labeling of genetically modified uh, foods. Uh, Peter Shomlin signed a law Thursday that puts Vermont on the path to being the first state to require labeling of genetically modified foods and promptly announced an online fundraiser to battle the expected legal challenges that would come from the food industry giants like Monsanto, etc. The Vermont laws takes effect in mid-2016, but opponents said shortly after the bill signing that they would file a lawsuit. The Grocery Manufacturers Association said that government has no compelling interest in warning consumers about GMO foods. Another obstacle to the state law looms in Congress as Republicans work on a bill that would forbid states from passing and enforcing laws requiring GMO labeling, which, of course, they're not, of course I'm sure they're not getting uh, big lobbying money from sources like Monsanto to uh, try and create that bill against genetically modified organisms. Uh, well, we have a few minutes here, and uh, I would kind of like to leave you on a good note. And uh, so I had another thing I dug out of uh, mothballs here that I wrote uh, uh, several, several months ago. And I write, The Son of God left his throne and crown of glory in heaven to come down to this evil, sinful, filthy cesspool of a planet to live among men who would mock, scourge, spit upon, rip at his hair, force thorns into his forehead flesh, crucifying him on a cross with nails beaten into his hands and feet, and, a, and being speared in the side, having his clothes divided up, hung naked in shame, all because, for God so loved this world. Today, his gifts of life, death, and resurrection is ridiculed. His existence is denied. His character is constantly assassinated for his desire to save you. His request, belief of his name, acceptance of his shed blood, and come to the mansion he's prepared lovingly for you. For you, for you see, when he was hanging on that cross, you were on his mind. Now tell me or tell him what you got going on that is more important than that. Well, there you go. Still, so, some, still some time left. Anything else on your mind tonight, Frank? Well, uh, other than just we talked about, we started the show with talking about the strange week that we've had. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that uh, I had... Uh, met up with a friend that I hadn't seen in a number of years, and that started as a series of events in my life where a lot of coincidental things were happening where I was contacting back with uh, long-lost friends, long-lost schoolmates, uh, won a race that I particularly didn't think I would win uh, in the NASCAR circuit, uh, got contacted uh, on some uh, driving jobs at, uh, of somebody that I hadn't talked to for a number of months, and it just mm. seemed like that friend thing that happened a couple of weeks ago has kind of spiraled into a two-week situation of kind of some, some strange events. A, uh, a deceased friend of mine's uh, ex got a hold of me and uh, friended me on Facebook. Just a lot of, mm. lot of, lot of strange things going on. And, you know, I just feel like nothing really happens in the world by accident. Right. It's, it's all uh, providential. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just another sign of the, of, the, of the end of times to me. That, uh, that friends are trying to contact you. Well, no, that, that, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. that old acquaintances... Ah, that I maybe see. you haven't talked to for a while, maybe you need to talk it's to sort that of person. Like, uh, sort of like things are being bookended. Things yes. are winding down. Yes, things the, the 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 chapters of your life are quickly accumulating, and mm. it's winding down. And, and like you say, God's wanting to put some bookends on. It. Yeah, well, I can definitely feel that time is approaching 
faster and faster. And I think you on. you felt that when I was talking about uh, the drone strikes on yep. the Christians. Absolutely. So, um, well, did you see Obama tweeted a picture of himself, a Photoshop picture of himself sitting on the Game of Thrones Iron Throne, a throne that uh, in the lore of Game of Thrones was forged by the breath of a dragon. Was it yeah, the seat yeah. of the dragon? Somebody said that's been photoshopped, but this well, no, is yeah, it was it was photoshopped. But. This has been uh, frankly speaking live, and I'm your host Frank Kolzauser and David Kenyuk, and we will see you next week.